Good evening and praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you all for joining in and um, being here on this Friday. And um, I took a break last week and um, then we'll have, um, we have our Bible study as we go into our new um, series um, called Elevating Your Health. And y'all know health um, is one of my new favorite subjects right now. And so um, I promised you all that I was going to have some guests come on. And so I have one. She's kind of waiting in the green room back there backstage. And so she'll be coming on to share her health journey. And um, but we're going to talk about it. We're going to go into the words. Um, those of you who may have been at the health fair this past weekend um, at our church um, would have heard some of what I spoke about. And hopefully, um, hello, Mia, hopefully tonight. This will help push you to make a decision to um, really embrace uh, living a healthy lifestyle, um, really, really pursue it more. Um, we can always do better. Um, and I think sometimes we take for granted this body that God has given us and entrusted us with. And we take it for granted. We beat this body up and we treat it pretty bad. And um, it's really time for us to be um, better stewards of this physical house that we're responsible for. We take care of our houses that we live in. We make our beds, you know, every day. We mop the floor. We vacuum the carpet. We keep dishes out of the sink. Well, some of us keep dishes out of the sink. We, you know, make sure the grass is trimmed. We do all of these things. We make sure that the roof doesn't have any leaks in it. We do all these things to protect our physical house that we live in. We even do go so far as to make sure the buildings where we work, the places where we worship, we make sure they're all in great condition. But then this physical body, we beat it up and we leave it kind of raggedy. And then we expect the body to give us 100% when we don't give our bodies 100%. So hopefully this series will um, open um, our eyes to wanting to um, do more and make a choice to live a healthy lifestyle instead of, um, you know, choosing to kind of just float through life. So um, I know some of us think, oh, we're good Christians. We're not doing that. You know, we take advantage of this body. So we're going to definitely go more into that um, in a little bit. So let's go ahead and open up with prayer. And we'll go ahead and get started. Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, for this time together in your word tonight, God. God, I thank you for every woman who connects tonight, God. I even thank you for our special guest, God. Lord God, continue to um, mold us and shape us into who you want us to be. God, open our minds, God, so that we can yield our thoughts, Lord God. Yield our minds, yield our hearts, and yield our ways to your ways, God. And God, help us, God, help us be mindful to be better stewards of the body that you have given us. Um, God, we, we've done so much to take advantage of this body. God, help us restore the years that the canker worm may have stolen. And some of us, the years we may have given to the canker worm to eat away from us. God, restore the years, redeem time to our lives, God, so that our latter years can be better than the former. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, ladies, um, I think my guest got knocked out. Okay, I guess she'll come back on. Um, I don't know what happened. Um, but, ladies, I want us to, um, when you think about um, where you are, um, as far as living a healthy lifestyle. Um, I think most of us can agree that we can do better. Um, we can do better. Um, for years, I thought that because I didn't fry foods in my house, um, I only used like olive oil. Um, me and my kids, you know, we would eat a lot of oatmeal. Um, we had a lot of like granola bars. We had healthy things in the house, even to the point that my nephews thought that we were just so healthy and they just 
it just couldn't fail. And we really weren't that healthy, but it just kind of seemed like we were healthy because we were basically um, ignorant of a better way. I'm, and ignorant, that's the word I'll use. Um, and so for me, for years, our, um, we have a health ministry at our church. And for years, every year, they would have a health fair and a walk, sometimes just a walk and a speaker, but usually some form of an event at least once a year. And I didn't even want to do the once a year walk. I mean, I would go and do it, but not really. I really just wasn't an active person as far as exercise went. Now I was active as far as doing things. I volunteered a lot of places, that kind of thing. But I wasn't active as far as like really taking care of my health, exercise, what my doctor said. You know, I've been on blood pressure medicine ever since I had... um my second child. And um, my doctor would always say, you know, diet and exercise, that, that would be like the key to, you know, either reducing this medication or, you know, getting you completely off of it. Well, you know, you diet and exercise a little bit, then you get tired of it and you just don't do it anymore. You're okay to sell it, you know, here and there. I eat, you know, vegetables here and there. So, I'm okay. And then at the same time, you know, having high blood pressure, hypertension wreaks havoc on your body. And um, those of you who may have other illnesses, um, other things going on with your body, um, diabetes, um, any type of um, all kinds of different issues. Um, most of the time you go to the doctor says, this can be resolved if you change your diet and exercise. I think most of us will agree with that. That's usually the consensus with the doctor. Even when I had sciatica and I couldn't walk, I, I mean, that thing, pain hit me in my back and my leg felt like lightning had struck me. They had to get the ambulance to come get me. Um, and I was in the hospital and the lady said to me, the doctor, she was just like, well, you know, exercise is the way to really, I was like, ma'am, I can't move. What do you mean exercise? Yeah, exercise is the way you treat. I was like, are you crazy? And so anybody that's had, you know, sciatica, you know, you just kind of lay there and, you know, kind of let it heal. But no, working your way through it is really the way to really heal that. And so, you know, it's just, been, um, you know, um, really, over the last few years, really being mindful of the example that I set as first lady of a church where people, you know, um, some may look up to me, some may not look up to me, but they look to me um, to be an example. And I wasn't a good example for many years. Many years, I, you know, gain, you know, just kept gaining weight, um, wearing compression socks, you know, uh, swollen feet and ankles, you know, all, all that stuff and, and eating stuff that I don't, that I know I shouldn't eat because I'm on high blood pressure medicine, you know, years and years of that stuff and just being a bad example and still talking about God is a healer and God, you know, and yes, God is a healer. But as my husband says, Sometimes it wouldn't be so much work to do at the altar if most of us would just change our diet and exercise. A lot of things that we come to the altar about, that we want prayer about, we can clear it up by changing our diet and exercising. Hello, I'm going to say it again. A lot of things that we're praying and hoping and believing and all that kind of stuff about, we can clear it up ourselves by diet and exercise. If you're taking your money, and I'm going to say this, if you're taking your money and buying Michael Kors bags and Gucci bags, but your rent and light bill do, I don't need to pray for you to have your rent and light bill paid. You need to stop buying. You need to stop overspending in one area and pay your bills. Prayer doesn't fix that. You fix that. See, some things we come to the altar about we can take care of. So now... <laughs> You know, <laughs> yeah, that's right. 
some things we really can take care of. Um, and so let's go to Matthew chapter nine, verse 12. And Matthew chapter nine, verse 12. And um, and this is going to take me into before I bring on our first um, bring on our guest, our special guest. But then Jesus heard that and he said unto them, them that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. Yep. Matthew 9 verse 12. Thank you, Tasha. So if you're sick, you need a doctor. But if you're well, you don't need a doctor. If you're healthy, you don't need a doctor. I want y'all to hear that. If you're healthy, you don't need a doctor. Just like when it says the law um, in the Old Testament was for lawbreakers. It was to show you what the law was so that if someone broke the law, that's what the law, that was why it was there. If you are driving the speed limit, you don't have to be concerned about what happens when you drive over the speed limit and getting a speeding ticket because you're not exceeding the speed limit. You're within the guidelines. When you go over the speed limit, now you're under the law. But as long as you are following the speed limit, you're not under the law. All right, so if you're not sick, you don't need a doctor. Not, I'm not talking about folks who like to hide sickness and don't take medication because they don't want to take medicine, but they're extremely sick. I'm talking about if you're well, you don't need to go to the doctor. My last visit to the doctor, I normally for years go to the doctor every six months. They got to check my blood pressure, got to check my kidney function, of course, because I have high blood pressure. My last appointment, my doctor was so impressed with my results and how I've maintained my weight loss and everything. I am still on blood pressure. My blood pressure showed up low for the first time. For the first time. It was either normal or a little slightly elevated. But this is the first time it showed up low. And so she said, well, it looks like everything is great. All of your labs look great or whatever. We're going to stop seeing you every six months now. How about you come back next year? And see, the more I improve my health, the less I need to see the doctor. Hello, somebody. The more I improve my health, the less I have to see the doctor. Because them that are whole don't need a physician. And I think too many times we focus and we like to, we like to pretend that we're not sick. Having high blood pressure means that I'm sick. But I take medication to make sure it stays regulated. But if I keep improving my health, I can come off the medication prayerfully, <laughs> but I gotta be doing something to come off the medication. I can't just stop taking the medication and then just think that my blood pressure is gonna just do okay. I can't expect my health to improve when I'm doing and feeding and sowing seeds of deep of sowing toxic seeds into my own body. If you're diabetic and you're still eating sweets, but you, you say, oh, I just got to count the calories. It don't matter what the calories are, baby. Yes, the doctor says you got to count the calories, but you already know you don't need to eat stuff with sugar in it. You don't need to eat stuff with carbs. You don't need to eat it. And then you're eating that stuff. And then the next thing you know, you fall asleep because your body's got to put you in a deep sleep in order to process all that sugar you just put in it. And then I'm going to have my guest on. 
For know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own, for you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. This is God's body. Even though the church is God's body, this physical body right here is God's body. And y'all, we are we have not been good stewards of this body. We got to do better. And I know a lot of you say, <laughs> I'm young and I'm not young. I'll be 53 next week. But a lot of people seem to think I'm younger than what I am. Born in 1970. So 1970 says I'll be 53 next week. So, um, but I want you to hear from someone else who decided to take basically a similar journey like me to improve her health. And I mean, this young woman <laughs> amazes me every day that she shows up. And so I'm going to bring her on and she's normally in Bible study. So you don't see her in the comments tonight because she's backstage. So let me bring her on. Hey, Miss Betty. Oh, let me unmute you. Oh, okay. Hey, okay. Miss Betty. This is Betty Jones. And Betty Jones has been in the Bible study with me. Look, before I started the um, the program that we're in, we're in E2M. That's no secret. And um, Betty was like, I don't know about doing this. I don't know if I can do it. But <laughs> Betty is, how old are you, Betty? I'll be 75 in October. I'm 74. <laughs> 74. And she'll be 75 this year. Mm -hmm. And Betty has gone from what size to what size, Betty? Um, from a size 20 to now I'm between a 14 and a 16, depending on how it's cut. Mm -hmm. I can get him a 14s, but I don't like my pants real tight. Just me. Mm -hmm. And um, a 16 feels more comfortable. Mm -hmm. But I depends on how the clothes is cut. I can, and that's a big jump from a size 20. I was bursting those little twenties open, <laughs> <laughs> and, I'm and then and one. then also I think you said your A one C. My A one C um was up. well. That's the main reason I I needed to lose weight because I was on the borderline of becoming a diabetic, and I always get upset when I think about becoming a diabetic. Cause I always thinking about people toes, they cut one toe off, then they end up with your whole foot and all kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, so I said, no, I got to do something. And I had tried all kind of diets. I'm not even gonna name them, but I've been on all kind of diets and I'm not putting nobody's diet down. And I saw um, um, First Lady on Facebook talking about um, E2M. And I said, what is this E2M? Because I had never heard about it before. So I, before I called her, I looked it up. Then I called her and asked her about it. And one of the things that really got me in tune that I'm going to do this thing other than my weight, it was a program where you pay one fee $40 for the first eight weeks or even pay it all at one time and you're in for life. And I had never heard about anything like that. And what I did, I still didn't believe it. I got into the program and then at the end of the eight weeks, I kept checking back in my account, see if they're taking any more money out because I never heard of anything like that. And um, the support is so good. Um, you have your coaches, um, you have your nutritionists, your dietitians, um, you have even cooking classes. And then another thing that really interested me about it was you, you have your videos and, and if you can't do the live, you can go back and look at your videos. And first lady said, oh, you can do it in your pajamas. And I said, oh, great. I, I, that really took me off because I didn't have to leave home. Although if you want to, you can go into a... Um, into the gym um uh and then you have your nightly encouragements um from the from the coach the head coach jeff 
Uh, he gives you a nightly speech every night except um, Saturdays. Uh, and they have different activities you could do. And and um, First Lady is a very good encourage, encourager. And the, your, you have food. It's just teaching you how to eat better and differently. Because mm -hmm. um, you're eating the same foods except for your carbs and all. You're eating your healthy fats. You're eating your uh, vegetables and you're getting your protein and you have a list of food you can choose from. That was another thing. I never had a program that you could choose the food from the list. And um, you didn't have to take no supplements. That's another thing I, I loved about it because a lot of the programs that I've been on, you had to do supplements and the supplements become expensive because they only last you like 30 days, mm -hmm. then you drop off. Mm -hmm. That's a whole other <laughs> Yes. And, and then you, um, and your health is so important. And we used to play around with it. I know I did a, a lot. Because I would say, oh, I can lose this weight. All I got to do is just stop eating these cookies or candy. But that's my downfall. Cookies, candy, potato chips, junk, anything junky. And so that didn't work. Then I would say, and I hate exercising, but I would I I don't mind walking. I for, force myself to walk. I'll go out and walk. And some of the other exercises, um, because of my arthritis and all, I can't do too much of. But they have chair exercises you can do. Um, mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I was doing some chair exercising um, last night. Um, but it's really a good program, and you have to. We just have to be conscious of our bodies because if I have high blood pressure, it runs in the family. And if you have high blood pressure, you may become a diabetic. All that leads into strokes and kidney problems and cancer mm -hmm. and all that other diseases that's taking people out nowadays. And I know that we all have to go, but I don't want to be um, sick and not able to do anything for myself. So it, and mm -hmm. nobody's perfect. I fall down sometimes because I didn't like drinking water. I hated water, but I have drinking more water. than I've been on it a whole year now. It was a year, the night for last month. And at one time I was worried about going on maintenance, but I'm no longer worried about going on maintenance because this is a life, a lifestyle for me. So mm -hmm. I don't really need to go on maintenance. I just need to know what to do and what not to do. And mm -hmm. just do it because I'm going to be doing it the rest of my life. Just like I take those blood pressure pills and those cholesterol pills. Mm -hmm. and, and, so, and hopefully and hopefully that cholesterol will improve. In yes. And I, when I went back, well, I have, I go to Dr. Monday, but when I went back um, last year, well, six months ago, my um, A1C had gone down. My blood pressure is better than it's ever been. And the cholesterol is good. And mm -hmm. um. And the doctor was really, really happy. You know, she yeah. said, what are you, what are you doing? Because for years they have been saying, exercise and eat more vegetables and fruits. And, and they're like going fruit. one in out the other, right? Yeah. I, I, I was like, fruits? <laughs> Only fruits I liked was, was um, oranges and bananas. Now I eat all the fruits. Mm -hmm. And... Um, uh, and uh, they would say, hey, you got to exercise, you got to do this. And I'll be like, yeah, 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 whatever. And I'll make them <laughs> out and get me a, stop at the store and get a pack of cookies or something on my way home. <laughs> but I know yeah. that is very important because I see what, what can happen to people. And some of the people that I have known <laughs> has gone on. And when I look back, I remember the doctor telling them, don't eat this. And don't eat, very seldom I eat fried foods now. Mm -hmm. Don't eat this. Don't eat that. I love macaroni and cheese and love rice, any kind of way you make it. I don't eat that much anymore. Mm -hmm. And then it's not taking everything from you because you do have a um, a celebration day. And that's one day a week that you choose that you will eat what you want to do. One meal, but mm -hmm. eat what you want to eat. But I find myself like the things I really love to eat when that celebration day, I don't really go all out like that. I'm mm -hmm. I sort of stick to what I'm doing. Yeah. And and so it's it's working. And like I said, it's the best program in the world. You only pay <laughs> one time. I mean, I've never heard of a program you only pay one time. And yeah. That that is it is excellent. So try. I was a little leery at first. And um 
while I'm retired and I'm on a fixed income. So first I was worried about, I'm going to, I'm going to be able to pay, pay that money every week. Cause I did my weekly. I knew I didn't have it all at one time. And, um, but I did, it was just like doing anything else. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And it's, I, and then the thing is, it's over with you paid that last year and that's it. Yeah. And, right. and, and then the other thing I remember you said that, um, when you have your great grand, yes, they have, um, they come with the snacks and stuff. <laughs> and, and so but you're that, able to keep up with them though you're able to be active with yeah, the great and I can be, I'm, I, well, I have to tell them to take the snacks back home but I, so I won't eat them. <laughs> but I have more energy and you know I can really enjoy them now you know mm -hmm. so more than I was before I'm not tired I'm not sluggish from eating all that food and and just and sometimes I would eat to be honest I wasn't hungry just bored I was just born, I just eat. Or, or something I like. And then I couldn't eat a little bit. Like if I open a bag of potato chips, I had to eat the half of the bag. And then I said, oh, well, I don't eat half. Let's eat the rest. Um, <laughs> and, and that's crazy stuff. But I would I would do it. And I would eat, um, can't eat one cookie. I would get a sleeve, eat a sleeve at a time. You know, I would actually <laughs> Like me, I ate the whole pack of Oreos, all three rows. Yeah, eat the whole thing, you know. Like, and the more I, the more I ate, the better it tastes. So I, I would keep on eating. And, I, and I, I would say, even when I visit my family, I would say, um, uh, my cousin that makes the cakes, I would say, oh, make sure you make my coconut pineapple cake. And that I would be selfish. I didn't want to give anyone any of it because I would eat the cake. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, you know, and Betty, you are such an inspiration. Um, you know, I, I tell people all the time, I say, you know, it's never too late. You don't have to accept, you know, whatever sickness or wherever no, you don't. are mm -hmm. or the limitations of things <laughs> like arthritis. So many people tell, oh, I, you know, I can't do this. I can't. You mm -hmm. can do something around. You can work around. The work arthritis. around it. Yeah. Work around I, it. I work around my. I, I can do the chair, the chair exercises mm -hmm. and I can walk. And even my neighbors, they'll say, um, oh, I see you doing your walk. And I say, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I say, yeah, I'm doing my walk. I say, I try to walk every day. Then when the weather's bad or I don't feel like going outside, I walk <laughs> in my house. I told the lady mm -hmm. today that she was saying the doctor told her to walk. I said, walk in your house. Walk in your house. Walk your floors out. Just walk from one end to the other. Walk up and down. Just walk. <laughs> yeah. And so we have to. Well, Betty, thank you so much for sharing that. And that's the thing. And the thing is, you don't do this once a month. You do this every day. Every day. You have to every do day. Every day. And I um I prepare my meals. And sometimes I get lazy and I don't prepare, but I already know in my head. I love avocados. And I already know in my head what I'm gonna eat. So mm -hmm. I, there's no one here but me, and I don't have the stuff in here. And so I just go in there. I mean, I don't have stuff in here that I'm not supposed to eat because there's nobody here but me. Mm -hmm. But um, I'll just come down and fix whatever I have and and eat it. And and sometimes I hate when people say, "What what did you cook today?" <laughs> cook, girl, I don't cook. I mean, I can get me some vegetables, a ball, <laughs> a piece of fruit. And I'm good to go by water. <laughs> yeah, because we have to, and that's the thing. That's why I wanted Betty to be on here because she's one of those people that this isn't a fly by night diet. No, that she's been in this program a year and she is consistently working on her health day in and day out. And, that's and that's the thing. We have to be consistently working on our health this god gave us this body and we really a lot of us need to repent about how we treated this body yes. or how we are treating this body right now and then we need to regroup and make a change in how we eat and we need to start exercising and we need to drink water that's right you know wanting this my mama makes some of the best sweet tea and lemonade but guess what I can't drink that stuff every day. I don't even I drink can. it once a week when I go over there. I have to drink that a couple of times a year. Mm -hmm. 
and just drink the water every day. Um, can't be eating fried chicken every day. Can't even nope. eat it every week. Nope. You have to, especially those of us who already know we have um, things that are exacerbated by having those, you know, having those certain foods, um, thyroid issues, arthritis, high blood pressure, mm -hmm. all these, all these things that we have going on. If what you eat makes it worse, then you can change that. You don't need when you have a flare up calling your pastor or calling somebody to calling your prayer partner to pray for you when all you got to do is change what you put in your mouth. That's right. That's right. And so um, I knew that Betty would be an example because a lot, Miss Betty, a lot of them say, well, you young, you can do all that kind of stuff. And I'm just like, I ain't as young as y'all think I am. <laughs> oh, you you are baby. My, my son is older than you. So you, you are baby. <laughs> But like I tell people, because I had people to tell me, oh, they do those exercises, but it's not for people our age. And I was like, mm -mm. no, you if you are a person that exercise and like exercise and you can do it, you may not have to do it to the extent you can do the modification. Right. You exactly. Can, you, you can, can do, do a modification of it. You I, can do some kind of exercise. Yes. It has yes. nothing to do with age. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. You see a lot of old people running around and, and doing a little exercise and running marathons and all of that's what they want to do. Yeah. Some people, but, I mean, that's, uh, I don't even run marathons, but you can, you can go as far as you really push yourself. Yes. To go. Yes. You can really do that. I mean, whatever your thing is now, I mean, a lot of people in church, they knew that I wore pants. I don't think they knew how big my ankles were mm -hmm. and how, you know, how bad my um my feet and everything had gotten. And so now, you know, they seeing me wearing these little pencil skirts. They hadn't seen my legs really in probably since probably before Michael was born. If I'm thinking, I don't know. It's been a long time. And so, you know, it's just like you can improve your health. Mm -hmm. You can make a change. And, and it's a lifestyle. It's yeah. a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Miss Betty. I'm gonna get on back to the Bible study, but thank and you. Thank for you for thank you for having me, and thanks, ladies, for listening. But it's it's a um, it's a lifestyle, and it's not a get fix fix quick nothing. You, you you're not gonna um, it's not nothing that you can go do it in a day, or a minute, or a week. It's a lifestyle. It's Have a blessed nice. evening. All right. Thank you, Miss Betty. All right. Thank you so much. So, y'all, I, you know, um, I really, I'm glad that you all had an opportunity to hear Miss Betty because she shows up and she does the work just like I do every day. And, um, and that's the key. For years, the only time I exercised might have been maybe a couple of times a year walking with my husband. And that hell fair walk, I only did a few things a year. I didn't exercise. And so exercise is important. It's, um, what is that scripture? Uh, I think I got it here. Excuse me. Bodily, for bodily exercise profits little, but godliness is profitable unto all things having promise of the life that is now that now is and of that which is to come so it's not that it doesn't profit you at all it does profit you some godliness of course is the greater thing but you still need bodily exercise because guess what when you die it doesn't matter N none of this matters anymore so you need this physical body to be in shape so you can glorify god more so we can serve god better we don't have to serve God from a tired, raggedy um, body. That's we got to take a nap. We got to rest. We got we can't walk for so far. We can't do but so much because we keep choosing to do things that make this body not more functional. And we can improve that. We we can make a choice and we can improve that. Um, <clears throat> let's go to. Numbers chapter 13. A lot of times we embrace something as our lot in life 
but it really isn't what God has planned for us. In Numbers chapter 13, and this is when, you know, God had promised the children of Israel that they would go into the promised land, the land that's flowing with milk and honey, this whole new life for them that they can't even imagine because they had been slaves before. They don't even know this new lifestyle that's waiting for them. So he tells them, he sent, tells them to send out spies. And then when you go there, yes, it is the promised land. The land is flowing with milk and honey. The land has grapes and has all this stuff. But guess what? It's going to require work on your part in order for you to have this flourishing lifestyle. You're going to have to conquer the people that's there. And, and not only that, not only conquer the people that's there, the bigger problem is you got to conquer your mindset. Caleb told them, we are well able to conquer those people. We are well able to overtake them and, and, and possess this land, possess this new lifestyle, possess this blessing that God has for us. But the rest of them said, mm -mm. <laughs> I look like a grasshopper because it says in our own sight, we were as grasshoppers. So that was how they saw themselves. And the way you see yourself is the way other people will see you. So if you think that having whatever condition you have because a lot of people and i know i have a lot of more mature people here use arthritis and being overweight as an excuse to not do better with how they live in and you can conquer that and you can lose weight so that you can be better and quicker on your feet and you don't have to have the excuse of not being able to function and, and, and minister and really complete you and walk in purpose that God has for you if you're a better steward over your body. Too many times we have the excuse. I can't do this. I, I can't do that. Well, maybe in this in this current state, you can't. But if you allow yourself to be open to something different, put some work into it yourself and allow God to open something new to you that will change your life. I can't tell you the number of people who ask me, how did you lose the weight? What are you doing? And I tell them, oh, I can't do that. Yes, you can. You are more athletic than me. You don't have as many health issues as I have. But the thing is, conquering the mindset. Stop viewing yourself as a grasshopper. Because you can do it. The next one. Let's see. I don't know which verse I'm going to go to, but um, this is the one about Naaman, who was a leper. And <clears throat> Naaman wanted to be healed of being a leper. And so he sent for the man of God and the man of God gave him something to do. Go jump in the water. That's what I need you to do. But he says, well, <clears throat> I thought you would come and pray over me and lay hands on me and then I'd be healed. That's, that's the way I want to do it. Pastor, I want you to pray for me to be healed of diabetes, but I'm going to still keep eating these cookies, cakes, and candy bars and um, 
<clears throat> drinking sweet tea and sweet lemonade and Kool-Aid and sodas. I'm not willing to do what you say I need to do and what the doctors have told me to do, change my diet. But I want you to pray this diabetes away because I don't want to do any work. It's going to be tight on this health subject because, look, I done got free in it. So for years, y'all could get by on it because I was bound in it myself. So I can only, look, it's going to, it's going to stay tight in this subject because that's how it's going to be because y'all messed around and let me get free as far as health went. <laughs> and so, um, y'all, I mean, but Naaman wanted, and let me see if I can find that verse where he said, I, I really wanted you to, um, Well, y'all read it on your time in um, that verse because I don't want to hold up too much time with that. Second Kings chapter, um, Second Kings chapter five. But in there, he says, I, I, I thought you were coming, like wave your hand over me and pray over me. And he was like, no, you need to go jump in that water and bathe. That's what you need to do. And a lot of us, what we need to do, go drink water go exercise and stop eating stuff the doctor already told us we don't need to eat and eat stuff we that is better for us but we want to negotiate those things well i can sneak and eat a little bit of this who are you fooling by sneaking piece of cake your a1c is what's going to register that not the doctors the doctor's a1c is going to stay the same your a1c is going to go up I'm going to sneak and eat, you know, some bacon and fried chicken. The doctor's blood pressure not going up because you eating fried chicken and salty food. So we're not sneaking and eating nothing from anybody. Who are we fooling? Because it's going in your mouth. So are you, you ingesting it? And look, this <laughs> we ingesting the stuff and fooling ourselves. We're going to sneak and eat something. And who are we fooling? Because we, we're not fooling God either. So, I, you know, this is mindset stuff. All right, next verse. Lot's wife. This is also an opportunity where God was taking them out of a whole toxic lifestyle and taking them someplace else. And he told them, don't look back when I'm destroying where you have been. Just keep looking forward. And Lot's wife looked back and turned into a pillar of salt. Became hardened, bitter. Because I guess something in the past intrigued her enough to look back. The same with the children of Israel when God was feeding them, raining down manna and what is it? Some kind of seed. I forget what it's coriander seed or something like that. Feeding them that day in and day out. And what else? I think it was quail. That was the meal plan. God was providing it for them every day, fresh. They couldn't keep it from one day to the next. They couldn't store any up. They had to use it that day. The next day, fresh food every day. Fresh food from heaven pouring down on them every day. And then they want to grumble and complain and say, well, we used to be able to eat so-and-so when we were back in Egypt. But you were slaves back then. I can sit here and talk about the stuff I used to eat. I get to have some of it, you know, here and there. I'm just not eating that stuff every day. Because back then, it's swollen ankles and compression socks and shoes turned over and too tight. And I got to change shoes after church because 
or change shoes by the time I get to church because I can't fit them because my feet too swollen. See, that was back then, but see, I was enjoying the food, but my body wasn't enjoying the food. Oh yeah, back then I could eat such and such. Back then I was doing this. I was in bondage to food back then. I was in bondage to an unhealthy lifestyle back then. And I think once we embrace new thinking, talk to you. Well, some of us don't need to talk to our doctor no more. The doctor has already told us what not to eat. And we do it for two or three days. And then after that, we don't do it anymore. You can easily just do what your doctor says do. Me, it wasn't enough for me. That's why I had to join a program that kind of tells me what to, what to eat. Well, it gives me choices. Tell me what workouts to do every day. And then it's just up to me to drink the water. And so it's just like, you can do that or get a program that's going to help you do it naturally. I don't recommend anybody doing a program that has your own diet pills and supplements and all that kind of stuff. The on something that does it naturally. Our health ministry at our church at Jerusalem gave us a cookbook this past Saturday at the health fair. And they gave us a cookbook last year. We had a nutritionist during the pandemic coming on. I think it was every other week or every few weeks. Teaching us about how to plan our meals, how to put what foods to put on our plate, how much, you know, we need to eat and how we can eat healthier. And people, not enough people were attending those classes. Let me say it that way. And those who have some of the most serious health conditions didn't attend the classes at all. Don't come to the health fair and don't take advantage of the healthy food options that are provided through our nonprofit. But we'll call for prayer over things that we can control ourselves. Well, let me say this, not control, but we don't have to contribute to our unhealthiness as much as we do. This is what we should be able to do. This is how we should be able to live. Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. If eating apple pie and cookies and sweets and carbs going to make my sugar level go up, I can't glorify God when my A1C is up and my blood sugar is up. I need the healer at that point because I'm sick. Fried chicken and a bunch of salt, driving my blood pressure through the roof, bunch of fatty stuff, driving my clogging up my arteries and clogging up my and making my cholesterol high. I can't glorify God because I'm, I should be able to eat and drink and do whatever I'm doing. And I should still be able to glorify God in that. We got to be better stewards of this body. We only get one. Now, modern technology, you know, and genius level doctors and scientists and researchers and, and um, was it biomedical engineers have figured out ways to do part, you know, organ transplants and everything. But I don't believe anybody has had a full body tra transplant. Once you gone, you're gone. 
We only get one time. We don't get do-overs with this whole body. We only get it one time and we got to do better by it. You, you want to live longer? You want to enjoy life better? Lose weight, eat better, drink water. How do you lose weight? Exercise. Exercise, that means, um, as I told the group that I was speaking on Saturday, not just walking. Walking is cardio. You need cardio and strength training. So you got to do both. Cardio walking is good for maintaining where you are. Strength, strength training builds muscle, which burns fat. And the reason why when you first start walking, you lose weight because you hadn't been doing anything before. So that's all, all the activity your body is now going, you know, experiencing. So it will burn some fat. So because you now have introduced movement but then after a while you say up oh, i've been walking when i first started walking i lost 10 pounds but now i've been walking for four months and i hadn't lost anything at all because you need strength training in there that cardio is only going to maintain where you are and then it'll maintain where you are but if you're still putting stuff in your mouth that's full of fat and unhealthy, you're still going to pack on the pounds. So it, it seems like it's not working. What it's doing is what you, all it can do. You got to do strength training in order to burn. And this is, this is a myth that I hear so many people saying, and I have said this in the past myself because I didn't know any better. I was ignorant. I said, well, if I could just diet and lose the weight, then I can tone up. Well, there's nothing to tone. <laughs> you muscle, you have to tone muscle so that it can burn the fat. You can, you know, eat in such a way, eat such a restricted diet where it will burn some of the fat, but it won't build muscle. It'll just burn some of the fat. But you want to build muscle and burn fat at the same time. So if you're exercising and doing that strength training, circuit training is ideal. Strength training, and you don't have to be lifting heavy weights. One and two pound weights, one, two, three pound weights work just fine. That's what I use for most of the time until I got a Black Friday sale and got some what, five, 10 and 15 pound weights. Um, and that was because of a Black Friday sale. I had no intentions of getting it. And those of you who have a treadmill and a bike and elliptical and all this equipment or whatever, pull it out and start using it. Be a better steward of your body. This temple, this body is where the Holy Spirit dwells inside you. So it's not so much as cleaning up the um well let me see cleaning up the ugly things on the inside that is part of it but some of it is just cleaning up how we treat this body and we're not worshiping the body but we want to be able to worship better in the body wouldn't you love to be able to, you know, do all you can to run through your community and serve God?
be able to go from house to house to house telling people about the goodness of the Lord, be able to, if you're ushering in your church, usher and be able to do a sing in the choir without your feet hurting, being able to run around your church, being able to um, do all those things, be able to serve your community in whatever capacity, how you're doing things. We've got volunteer at the schools, be able to do those things from a hundred percent ability Versus a little tired, raggedy body where you can't give but 35% because you got to take a nap the rest of the day. Wouldn't you want much better be able to serve God with your full faculties and be able to go out of here in a wrestle state instead of having sickness and disease take you out of here? Choosing to live a healthy lifestyle. That's our dilemma. That's our choice to make. And it's it's completely up to you. It's completely up to me. So now we got the ball is in our court and we got to do better. We got to do better. All right, ladies, I've taken up a whole lot of your time tonight. Thank y'all so much for being a part. Um, so all of your um, great comments. Um, thank y'all so much. I'm, I hope this is resonating with you. And I hope that this will get you to make some changes where this becomes daily. This is what you do. And let me say this. This is something that I had to get. Um, get aligned in my mind. Um, a habit is something you do all the time. You, you have a habit of doing things. Um, moderation means you do something every now and then. Moderation means that. So with the program that I, I'm in, we learn moderation. So that means once a week, you can have that cheat meal, you can put or celebration meal, you put whatever you want in it because you know, okay, you're not going to do things every day. You have it in moderation. But if you're eating something every day, you're diabetic, but you're pinching off a piece of cake every day, high blood pressure, but you're pinching a piece of sausage or bacon every day. You're throwing a bunch of salt on your food. Um, you have um, inf um, problems with inflammation, arthritis, but you're still eating inflammatory foods. You got acid reflux and you still eat stuff that cause, Af that cause your acid reflux to flare up. <clears throat> if you're eating those things every day, then that's daily. It's not moderation. Moderation means I have it once a week, once every few weeks, maybe once a month, something like that. That's what moderation is. Moderation doesn't mean daily. If you're doing this daily, this is your lifestyle. Your lifestyle includes you eating sugar, cakes, and cookies. Your lifestyle includes you eating peanut, uh, not peanut butter, potato chips, bacon, sausage, salty foods. Your lifestyle includes you eating tomato-based products, spaghetti, and, and, and um, all this stuff. And you know it causes acid reflux and inflammation. Pepper and all that. You, you know it bothers you. It don't bother everybody. But you know it bothers you and you still eat it. And then when the doctor tells you you have an ulcer or you have something going on or whatever, and they got to go in and do this um, procedure on you because you you got something inflamed inside of you. That's something you can control. You can control the narrative with your healthy lifestyle. You can either live an unhealthy lifestyle or you can live a healthy one. It's your choice. All right, that's it, y'all. So if you have any prayer requests, um, we can pray and then close out. And then we'll be back next week, hopefully. Next week is my birthday weekend. My birthday's next Thursday, but we got some things planned. Hopefully nothing in will interfere with our Bible study time. So um, you're welcome, Sister Bonzella. 
So um, hopefully I'll be back next week and we will talk about, let me see what's my next subject next week. We'll go deeper into each one of these. All right, tonight was living a healthy lifestyle. Next week, maintaining a healthy mindset. Maintaining a healthy mindset. And then we'll talk about building a healthy body. And then the last one, which will take us into May, reinforcing healthy relationships. So we're going to explore all these different dynamics of healthy lifestyle. Because guess what? Healthy relationships are important to a healthy lifestyle. Healthy relationships, reinforcing healthy relationships are important in a healthy lifestyle. Building a healthy body is important. Maintain a healthy mindset. These things are important. So we're going to explore each one of those things. So I hope tonight the seeds were planted. I hope some were watered. I hope some God going to bring the increase from so that we can all grow and we can have this enriched life because that's what I want, you know. That's why this Bible study is called Women Enrichment, because I want your life to be enriched. I don't want you to just hear something and it just be like, oh, well, you know, we've heard this Bible study, you know, story again and again. I want your life to be changed by what you hear me talk about. So, um, y'all, I'm looking forward to y'all telling me something. Y'all reach out to me in the next days, weeks or whatever that you've made some decisions and made some changes and you're going to, you know, you're going to do it. And you you want better. You want the land. You want a lifestyle that's flowing with milk and honey. Because I'm telling y'all right now, <laughs> I feel like mine is. And it's because I have a different outlook now. Have more clarity about things. And um, I'm just able to do a lot more. So, amen. All right, y'all. So, I don't see any prayer requests. So, we'll just close out in prayer. And... Um, Hopefully, I'll see y'all next week. I don't think anybody's going to surprise me with anything next Friday. If not, if I'm not on here, y'all know that's why it's because my, my birthday next week. But um, I think since my birthday is on Thursday and the act, most of the activities are planned on Saturday, I should be okay with Friday. All right, y'all. So let's pray and um, I will see y'all prayerfully next week. All right. God, we thank you for this time together in your word tonight. God, I pray for every woman who presented her heart tonight, God, who opened herself to receive from this Bible study and what the Holy Spirit was speaking tonight. God, I pray that you open our minds, God, open our hearts, make us receptive, God, so that we can make the changes that we need to make, God, so that we can better glorify you in this temple that you have entrusted us with. God, continue to show us the tools that you have placed in our lives, God, that will help us be able to better manage and better steward our lives and this vessel that you have given us stewardship over. God, continue to strengthen us, God. Strengthen even our faith, God, where we may even think, God, that this can't be possible. I'm too old. I'm too overweight. I, it's too late for me. I'm too, I got too many health conditions. I got too many sicknesses. I got too many bills. I got all this stuff. God, let not any excuse be an excuse any longer. Show every one of us, God, where you've made provision for us so that we can enter into the abundant life that you have for us. Thank you, God, that the abundant life is not just spiritual. It can is tangible and physical that you want us to have. Your will be done in earth as it is in heaven, in our lives as you have already established it spiritually. Let it be in our lives physically. For you have given us, Lord, all things in this earth to richly enjoy. Thank you, God, for what you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, ladies. All right. So, all right, y'all. I will 
See y'all next week. All right. Y'all have a blessed one. Let's see. Let me find my little closing. Where is it? There we go. Thank you.